Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva for GSR 18, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Neil Sahota, who is IBM Master Inventor. Neil, thanks for joining us in the studio. Yeah, my pleasure, thanks for having me. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about, you've been part of the, the panel session this morning on uh, AI and IoT. Perhaps we could talk a little bit about why is this global dialogue on AI and uh, IoT important? Well, we're in a time of great change, not to sound cliche, but there's a lot of rapid advancements happening. You know, if you really think about it, people are wondering what's, what's going to happen, what does this mean? And right now, it's really hard for us to define what that feature is going to look like. If you think back 10 years ago, nobody really could have envisioned ride sharing, something like Uber, right? And that was a whole new industry spawned from the platform of the smartphone. So when we talk about today, people are naturally concerned about what's going to be in the, in, for the future in terms of you know, relationships between people and machines, maybe machines taking jobs, the education, workforces, what, what's going to happen? And rather than be reactionary about it, I think having starting the dialogue now, having some serious discussions to say, what is AI, IoT, cybersecurity going to mean? What do we have to do about it? Not just from like a purely, you know, individual country regulatory type of thing, but more on a global scale, you know, with some common practices, ethics, morals, whatever it might be, is the right conversation to have now. Otherwise, we're going to become, we're going to wait for something wrong to happen and then try and react to it. And what were some of the key takeaways from today's panel discussion? Well, I think the one of the consensus was that no one can really predict what the future is going to be like, not even 10 years from now. But there's some level of regula regulation is necessary. And there's going to have to be a, some sort of balance on what, what that is. We don't want to under-regulate, we don't want to over-regulate, because that also then might control, curtail some of the opportunities out there. For the example, if we over-regulate, we may prevent the ability for advancements in medicine and saving lives, whereas if we under-regulate, you might have some wild accidents with self-driving cars that will cost lives. So trying to understand what that right balance is going to be key. Understanding that also that we all have a different perspective on things. So how do we bring all these diverse viewpoints together and come up with a common agreement? And what's your perspective as IBM master inventor? Are you you're there at the, the, the cutting edge, the pointy end of the of the pencil there? What's, uh, what, what, what for you is, is, is the, the key goal, uh, the key, um, I suppose, the, the key issues that we should be thinking about? Well, we live in the digital age now, and you know, country boundaries don't really matter when it comes to the flow of data and the use of technology. I think what's key for us is to have a global discussion with you know, organizations like the United Nations and the ITU, the forefront driving that, to help us come to some sort of common understanding, common regulations, rules, laws, whatever it might be, that apply across the world. You, you talked a little bit about uh, issues when there's under-regulation. What about in terms of the, the, the relationship between AI, IoT, and, and cyber security? What about the, the things that might be affecting us that we can't, uh, can't predict or can't do, do too much about, or perhaps that we can defend ourselves? So that, that's a great question, because we generate, I think, over 10 petabytes of data a day, which is more than all the books, all the libraries in all the world. All that data is flowing around. IoT in particular, we're now generating data for machine consumption, not people consumption. IoT, AI, all are reliant on trustworthy data, right? Because at some level, there's some recommendations or in some case, low impact decisions being made. How do we know that what's being done is, is right and we're getting good data, right? And how do we know that somebody's not trying to hack, right? Which is why cybersecurity plays a key role. So I think from, from that perspective, we really have to try and manage this new ecosystem that we're building with this technology. And is that the best way to defend ourselves against a uh, possible cyber attack? It, it might be. I think the, the power of AI, IoT could be that we could actually do more rigorous protection testing, look for vulnerabilities before we release something. As well as, you know, the, the, what we've seen from AI is, because it thinks differently, depending on how, we, you know, depending on how you train it, it might be able to detect or foresee threats or vulnerabilities that we haven't discovered yet. So it could be a real tool for good. What about the most exciting developments? What, what, uh, what should we be looking forward to? Well, <laughs> well ho hopefully it's, it's not worrying about just like cybersecurity threats and all that stuff, but actually using 
these technologies for more productivity. Someone once said that machines are about productivity, people are about creativity. So my hope is that the AI, you know, AI IoT picks up some of the more administrative type of work, freeing us up for more value add type of thing. So deeper thought and deeper exploration like in terms of like cancer research or you know, trying to find you know, the, the next big thing, maybe it's in space and finding alien life but basically trying to free us from more of the mundane tasks of our work to do the more high, high value add types of tasks. And I mean, is it true to, to say that the majority of our interactions with AI will be voice in the future? Will be, I mean, a lot of people are, are putting in all of their, uh, 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 obviously typing in requests now into Google and that kind of stuff, but everything is, is everything going towards voice now? Right now, that, that, that is the, the trend. Uh, one of the powers with AI is you should have, have the ability to have a conversation with the machine. It's not about keywords or anything like that, but it's just like you and me talking right now. And I think that's it's more natural for us, and I think that's what most people are actually looking for. So you might say that that's, that'd be awesome, but one day we might have telepathic interfaces. <laughs> well, you, you can obviously read my mind. We're, <laughs> <laughs> we're coming to the end of the interview, but thank you very much indeed for being with us in the studio today, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you sooner. Probably next time we won't even have to talk, so uh, everybody could just just be able to understand exactly what we're saying just by tapping in. I'll make the goal for the next time. Thank okay. you. <laughs> you know, thanks very much right. indeed. My pleasure. That's great. And thanks thank very much you. for joining us, and uh, please check out our other videos on the ITU YouTube channel. Thank you.